guys can go over here. What's up, what's up? Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day, night, whatever you want to call it. All right, so um, today I am going to be talking about custom light recipes. As soon as I can get this lighting situation fixed. All right, so custom light recipes, science LED, uh, you guys know I'm rocking the Raging Kush, little chat pulled up here, and um, one of the things that uh, I have deployed in the room, which is a far car sensor from Apogee, it gathers a lot of information um, that allows me to dial in my recipe a little bit better than what I was doing before. So I'm going to take a dab and then uh, we'll go ahead and get this started. I'll go ahead and share my screen and uh, show you guys exactly how I dial in my recipe. All right, be hitting this frost factory this morning or this afternoon, tonight, whatever the fuck it is. Cheers. What's up, poops? Tastes so bomb. Here's how you clean your banger with the email. Paper towel, you can reuse it multiple times. Ball it up, shove it in, twist it, poke it, bop it, squeeze it, pinch and roll, shove that down your neck, get you some DC cleaner. Throw that on a Q-tip. 
Take that Q-tip, clean the inside, watch out for the steam. Get all the way around the edges, on the lip. <clears throat> Flip it, dip it. What's up, Dirty? Man, your guy never uh, followed through with the invoice. I don't know if that wasn't a good enough deal for him or what. I knocked off 75, more than 75 bucks. Those lights are like 14.95 a light or 14.25 a light. I got him down to 13.25 a light. Told him if he orders more, I'll give him a bigger discount. And with quantity comes a bigger discount, and I pass it on, but for only two lights, I gave him a great deal. Haven't heard back, so we'll see. ISO doesn't work the same as DC cleaner. No. <laughs> also, if you're charring your banger, you're probably going in at too high of a temperature. You, you go in at too high of a temperature and it's gonna it's gonna char it no matter what. Chop it around. Let him chop around, but before he decides to spend his money elsewhere, let him know that I'll work with him. And he's not gonna get customer support and service like he's gonna get from science and led anywhere else from the forum that has all the light recipes on it or the website i should say to instagram to me like, there's just so many um so many avenues of support so i don't know we'll see I don't like seeing people make bad decisions. Yeah. It is what it is. We'll see. So anyways, let's get into this. All right. So I planted um, a bunch of beans. It looks like the camera froze. Oh, there it is. And um, I think there was... 50 okay out of those 50 there was what three that um, did not crap after being submerged in water for 48 hours um, so what I did is I planted the um, remaining 47 um, and over the last two days of them being in their rock wool in the dome, I've gone in with these tweezers. They are soldering iron tweezers for like electrical work. They're just very sharp, very precise tweezers. And I went in there and I used these to help the seedlings that were struggling to break through the rock wool. Maybe they were upside down in the hole, so they were having a hard time flipping over and getting out. Whatever the case may be, I was going in and I was helping them get out of their holes. And um, because of, of that, when I went in today to check on them, almost every single one was already out. There was maybe a handful, four or five, that were still working their way out. But all of them looked like they're going to successfully germinate and pop. Now, Popping beans in rock wool has been a challenge for me um, for a long time. So for me to get, you know, 100% success rate on the ones that I do put into rock wool, that's great. The three that I lost, I don't, I don't even consider those part of the loss. That's a, a germination failure rate, you know what I'm saying, out of the 50 
there's three that didn't even crack. But then you're going to have that when there's, you know, some beans that are immature and not fully developed. And that's what those three were. So, you know, those ones were whatever. But the ones that did pop, to get them fully planted in rock wool and have them sprout and have no issues, I'm feeling good about that. So, um, the temperature and humidity, um, let's go over everything. We're going to look in Pinnacle and I'm going to show you guys the environment, the lighting, and we're going to talk about the spectrum and far red percentage. Um, I uploaded a video about this earlier, but um, I did want to do it live as well so that you guys could ask questions and I can kind of go a little bit more in depth. So, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to pull up display capture. And you know what? Let me see. Let me try a different way. Let me do a window cap. Ugh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not that one. Okay, so you can see on that screen now, <clears throat> I've got uh, lighting up. Let me get rid of that and pull up environment. All right, so in there right now, the room is at 80.1, uh, okay? Lead surface temperature um, of 81.9. Uh, um, that's not actual lead surface temperature. That's just on the tray, okay? Um, the delta between the two, 1.8, not a big deal. Uh, relative humidity in the room is low. I have brand new humidifiers that I'm going to do an unboxing video for, um, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, we'll get those humidifiers hung, both in veg and flour, and uh, get the RO hooked up, and we'll be good to go. And then uh, we've got leaf VPD here. Obviously, that's not correct because the infrared radiometer is not looking at the plants right now. Um, and then CO2 and O2, right? So basically, what, what's important right now is temperature in the room. When you have seedlings, it's important for it to be warm, but not hot. You know what I'm saying? 80 degrees is warm as far as plants are concerned, but it's not hot. And that means that the, the seedlings are going to be warm enough to root and start wanting to grow. If it's too cold, they're not going to you know, root very well. They're going to be very slow to start, right? So you want the room a little bit warm. Now, it would be nice if my humidity was up in the room, but because there's a dome on right now, it doesn't really matter. I'm keeping the dome misted, so they're staying nice and, and humid in there, okay? Um, you can see overall the temperature doesn't really fluctuate too much. You know, um, if you look at, we're looking at the past 24 hours here, and uh, this room temp right here, the average is 80.7, the minimum is 78.3, and the max was 83.7. So not a huge variance, okay, only five, five and a half degree difference. All right, the next thing is uh, lighting. Right, so uh, I have this whole lighting column here, right, and let me, all right. So the total PPFD, which is everything combined down from 389, right, lower wavelength, all the way up to the top of the upper wavelength, that's 761, okay? And um, so we're dividing that between total, lower, and upper, and then we also have far red percentage here. Um, Bruce Bugsby uh, teaches that you know far red percentage is the greatest predictor of stem elongation and leaf expansion. So using far red percent, we can pretty much help manipulate the stretch and leaf expansion. So 10% was what they found in their study across 
over 20 different species of plants to have the greatest effect on yield. <clears throat> and then um, across this bottom row, I just have DLI all the way from 11 hours a day up to 18 hours a day, which is all the various hours that I'll run, 18 being the most, which I'm going to be running right now, going all the way down to 11, which is the least amount of hours that I'll run in um, flower towards the end. I might drop down a little bit less, but we'll see. So um, in order to achieve the appropriate PPFD and far red percentage, I had to um, I had to customize my recipe for my lights. Now, PPFD landed at 266 because, you know, I'm okay with anywhere between 200 to 300 for seedlings. Maybe around like 250, you know, you don't want to bump them too hard when they're first coming out. So um, until they get the first set of leaves, you know, try to stick to around like 200, 250 PPFD. So we're at 266 and I'm okay with that. I'd rather give them a little bit extra light and have them get accustomed to that rather than, you know, treat them like little bitches and then they're super sensitive right out the gate. So um, we'll start them off right here, and, and then we'll, um, I was like, all right, I don't want to give them too much far red right out of the gate, because if I give them, you know, the full 10% far red, I might get too much stretch, right? I don't want that much stretch right out of the gate, so I figured it's better to start at five on all of these, and then we'll go from there, right? So um, right now we're going to run, you know, four and a half, five percent 5% far red. As we get these transplanted and spread out onto all the various trays, half the room is going to get 5% far red, the other half is going to get 10%, and then we'll document the changes. Okay? All right. So, let's see. All right, you got that? <coughs> so... This screen is the Science LED Echo Air, and this is where I came up with the recipe that you saw all the metrics for right now. So if I raise or lower that master intensity, the overall PPFD is gonna go up or down, okay? So I have a screenshot of this recipe um, so that I can reference it. But this is just a current spectrum setting. It's not an actual recipe recipe yet. So I'm going to go into a recipe. Remember this, 75, 100, 85, 50, 35. Okay? Okay. Now, <clears throat> you can see here's some of my recipes right here. This is a Kush recipe. Okay, this is going to be um, for 16 hours on and uh, eight hours off, which is going back to Grafana, 16 hours gives us a 15 DLI, which is a great place to start your seedlings. Um, typically fruiting plants need a minimum of 20 DLI when they're vegging. Um, however, these aren't actually vegging yet. They're just barely hatching out of their, their seeds. So 15 is perfect, and then we'll increase from there. Um, a lot of people like to run 18 hours per day in veg. You can if you want, but those are also the people that typically have to run the PPFD pretty low because the, their plants are getting light saturated under 18 hours with LEDs, right? So 16 hours is what I run in veg typically, and in this case, it's going to work out great. So I know I'm on track with my lighting there, okay? So we're going to keep this a 16 hour recipe and now I just need to think what time do I want this shit to start, okay? What time do I want my lights to come on in the morning and what time do I want them to go off at night? These things matter, okay? So <clears throat> right here this shows that um, everything is off right here, okay, at midnight. So really this is the first step at 8 o'clock. It's an instant on, it doesn't ramp up. It's 100% on the cools, right, which is for my um, cryptochrome signaling in the morning to wake the plants up faster. 
okay? Um, the white intensity is at 50%. Red is at 90, far red's at 10. Red's not even on at all. Master intensity is at 25, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna edit this first step. <clears throat> red's not on, it's at 25 and 50, 100. I need to see what that does as far as PPFD goes, you know, um, what that looks like. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that as is actually, it's fine as is. We'll go to the next step, which is at 815. And what happens there, it just ramps up the intensity to 50. That might be a little too much. And then after that, it transitions for 15 minutes into 30% um, warm with the intensity at 100. That's too high. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to do this. So we only want cryptochrome signaling for the first 15 minutes of the day. Okay, so that's what this is. Okay, and it's going to ramp up to our main intensity here of 35. <clears throat> but we don't have any, any reds on yet, and the cools are not um, super high on the intensity. We'll apply that. Then at 8.15, and mind you, for 15 minutes, it's ramping up to the next step, which is going to be... There, there, we're going to go up. What was that recipe? Hold on, let me pull it up on my phone. <clears throat> All right, here it is. It was 75, 185. So... At this step, we could go to all right. So blues come on. 50% warm intent or white intensity, 25% overall. And then it goes up to 75, 35. We're still not at full intensity on the whites where we could be because we're going to do that here at 30. But the cools are going to drop down to 75% when that happens. And the reds are going to go to 85 which you would think, okay, it's 85% red, which means it's 15% far red. But when we actually look at the percentage of far red photons in this recipe, the percentage comes out to 4.5%. Okay, and then we're going to set this to 50. And we're going to set this to 35. And that's not the initial step. We're going to ramp and, yep. So by 8.30, we're going to be on our full-ass recipe, all right? Then by 9 o'clock, we don't need to do anything. I'm going to delete this step, apply. <clears throat> okay, so we have lights come on at 8, cryptochrome signaling for 15 minutes. At 8.15, the lights ramp up. And intensity and start shifting to a warm blend at full intensity so that's fine and then the lights are going to be on from 8 until 8 that would make 12 9 10 11, 12, 
6.16, so off at midnight. So at 11, we're going to start bringing the intensity down. And we're going to start bringing it more warm. Okay, okay, I see, I see what we're doing here. I see what I'm doing. We're going to keep these reds on at 50. We're going to bring that back down to 35. And <clears throat> we're going to keep that at 85. Put this about a hundred still. So now it's just shifting from what the recipe was all day to getting like um, not as blue. It's gonna be warmer, right? Like this, what these color bars look like. <clears throat> Apply that. That should not be a step that gets ramped, okay? And then. Well, after that, we'll immediately start ramping into an even warmer spectrum, but dimmed down. And we're going to go with... This is arbitrary as fuck, by the way. I'm going to keep the actual percentage the same the whole time. I'm just going to change the intensity. Okay, so now we're at 80% warm. 80% overall intensity on the whites. We're at the same far red split, but we're dropping the intensity of the uh, red down from 50 to, let's go down to 25 and the master intensity went from 35 to 25 then by 1130 we are in full on sunset mode which split okay and we're going even more warm dropping the intensity that's too much of a drop minutes before the lights go out we're going full far red and I think we're good right there I have to double check what that PPFD is but I think we might have to up that a little okay Y'all want to go see what it looks like now? Should we go simulate this recipe in the grow room? So you guys can see what it does. What's up, chef? What's up, everybody? All right. Red and deep red are different. Far red and... Far red and deep red are different. All right. So let's go see.
It's just the whole day, basically, and then it's going to go to the sunset here pretty soon. That was the second video. Oops. I hope I didn't break that. This camera or this uh, laptop lid just closes so easy. Alright. So you guys can still see. Oh, good. I think we're all good there on that recipe. Let me double check. I'm going to activate this recipe. And there we go. Lights are off for the night. Tomorrow morning, everything will start up. Do 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 do. I get that app open and you took notes. Good man, I'm glad. Oh yeah, chef, you got your shed pack. I got my seeds from Quantum Genetics. Thanks, Poops. I try and keep my room pretty clean. Yeah, Bam Bam Six is a company my whole my floor did. He does a these like blunts. He puts concentrates in them, and he calls them Bam Bam Six. Ooh. So, how many of you guys have heard of Farmer Freeman? Farmer Freeman Easy X Y. Okay. 
Okay. They do um, sex testing. That's where I get my kits from. So I'm about to order some for these beans that you just saw. So, let's see, they have a 10 pack for 120, the 50 pack for 550. Feel like I could get them cheaper somewhere else. For these beans that you just saw. <clears throat> so let's see. They have a ten pack for one hundred and twenty. The fifty pack. You make yours from fem seed, so you don't have to worry. Nice. Nah, I don't know it. I don't know it. So the plant just has to be seven days old. Don't apply any foliar uh, sprays to your plants before you do sex testing. There can't be any chemicals on it. It's a good thing to know. I, I didn't know that my first time doing it and I had to rinse the plants off pretty good first. Most customers submit a one centimeter to one inch cut of a healthy leaf tip or similar plant tissue. Alternatively, smash cards may be used instead of testing the leaf sample directly. Smash cards are an optional step in the sample collection process. To use a smash card, a piece of paper, uh, whoops, I lost where I'm at. To use a smash card, a piece of plant material is smashed into the paper, transferring the DNA. Excess leaf or plant material is then scraped off and discarded. Smash cards require more work to process in the lab, therefore, we ask if they are necessary. So no, we don't need smash cards. Add that to the bag. Mr. Grow it. Mr. Grow it. I'll add it. Let me see. Go to checkout. So expensive. Have a promo. Mr. Grow it. Apply. Saves me 10%. Thank you very much, Dirty. Check out. Oh, what the fuck? This coupon has been removed from your cart. The coupon discount is available to first time buyers only. Well, fucking, how about you give me a military discount, then, you shitbirds? Fuck. That's ass. How about you give me a returning customer discount? You motherfuckers. Priority with return mail. -in. That's fine with me. Wow, they allow a lot of different payment methods. That's pretty cool. They allow Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, Check, Money Order. Damn, son, they do it all. How did you hear about it? It's IG. My nig, IG. You guys can't see my screen right now, right? Okay. Good. Good. Because I'm buying shit. My wife's going to be like, can you stop spending money? Please, for the love of fucking God, stop spending money. Maybe. Okay, we got to buy some more stuff. I don't even care. It's not even worth it. $50, $55 to start a fucking other email or use another... No, just... 
Fuck you, Freeman. Just take my $55. Mm -hmm. Um, we're gonna go to Green Methods. Go on green methods, we're gonna get some stuff. We're gonna get some stuff. We're gonna get some stuff. We're gonna get some nematodes. Gimme. Get some Stratioli laps. Schmitus. Uh, no, that was quite a bit last time. Yeah, that's fine. I'd rather have too much. And it's 32 bucks. And then we're going to get some... Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Ambliophores. Ambliaceus cucumeris. gonna get some slow release sachets and we're gonna get some um, a bottle and we're gonna do both biggity biggity both you made a vermi baby Ooh, yeah. sachets I went to sachets Do I like the hooks? I can't remember. No, I want the sticks. Give me the sticks and the card. Okay. And then I think I still have my sticky fly traps. It's simple, I'm not going to run too much stuff. I know I already got the SF, a C. There's flea market, we do the little corn, some of strawberry. So, what is this? Oh, okay. I already got the Nima Force SF. I don't need the other ones. Um, what else? What else? What else do I need? Those are the green lacewing predators. My control is a is a root inoculant, I believe. Biological insecticide. Highly successful fungus. BVA. Yep.
Don't need that. All right, I think that's it. I think we're good there. I wanted to see what this was. Pre-emulsified, highly refined, high paraffinic, low aromatic oil. Huh. Nice, droplet size is huge. fuck is in it? What's in it? What the fuck is it? Who knows what this is? This, this didn't tell me what it is. I want to see the label. Hey, there was a fucking thing back there that said label. What the fuck? It, oh, it's an oil. Uh, okay. Mineral oil, other ingredients. You fuck. Unsulfonated residue of petroleum oil. What the fuck? I'm not putting that on my plants. Blah. Nope. Seen enough. Nope. 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 Checking out with what I got. Check out. Skirt. 120 bucks, y'all. Got what I needed. Got what I needed. You got what I need. And I'm returning customer, sign me in, son. Ooh. You didn't have a password, is it correct? Well, that just, just rude. That doesn't seem right. Whatever, dude, I don't care. Just fucking bill me. So I'm tired of this shit. Shipping is $40, though. That's where they get you. That's where they fucking get you to shipping. But they have to because they ship it with like a styrofoam box, ice packs, ship it. Like every Tuesday, I think they ship out their orders. Oh, it says right here. I think. Oh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't pay attention. All right, 169 bucks total. Botanigard is better. Yeah, I've seen a botan Botanigard, but man, it's yucca. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Dude, if I wanted to spray my plants down with some fucking Perrier water and some fucking peppermint oil, I could do that. I don't need to pay for that shit. Anyways, it, uh, one of the best, um, let's see, trifecta oil, best control, trifecta crop control, you guys know what the fuck that is? Do you know what the fuck that is? I'm gonna show you. Ooh, ooh, lag, lag. I know, it's because my computer was about to die. Uh, the lag, the lag. Oh my gosh. The lag won't stop. Okay. 
trifecta crop control. Mildew mold dressed in mites. Aphids, thrips, white flies, detritus, fusarium, downy and powdery mildew. Do 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 without toxic chemicals. Do 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 do. Unique blend of food grade, highest quality essential oils, including garlic, thyme, clove, peppermint. Mm. And then it's emulsified, pet friendly food grade. Yes. Yes. Ready to use maximum strength. You don't even have to mix it up. It comes in a fucking bottle. Just spray it. Just walk around and... Oh, skate, 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 skate. What is it? The jug? I should bring you a big-ass jug. Oh, you just need 32 ounce, homie. No mixing required. Diluted at maximum strength. Point and spray. Thoroughly all skeet, skeet, skeet all over the plants until foliage is dripping. <laughs> Including the underside of the leaves and the surface of the growing medium. Yeah, sir. You know why this would be good? Because on rock wool, you get algae that grows on the top. Of the cubes and you can get mold that grows on the top of the cubes but if you're spraying the plants and the tops of the cubes with this first sheesh. oh look they tell you what's in it on the label active ingredients thyme oil clove oil garlic oil Peppermint oil, corn oil, geranium, citric acid, rosemary, filtered water, soap, isopropyl alcohol, vinegar is a big part of this. That's why it kills and it's good for cleaning. Sheesh. You could use this to clean your room. And then I think there's another one too called EM what, right? Yeah, EM what. Organic liquid probiotic. Some of a bunch of other shit. What's the other one I was thinking of? There's another one. Is it Dr. Zymes? Yeah, it's Dr. Zymes. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, what the fuck is in there? Citric acid is the main ingredient in there. So it's an effective insecticide and fungicide. Kills soft bodied insects, mold and mildew, it's food grade ingredients. Use up to and on the day of harvest, no oils, so it won't clog stomata. Gluten free. Who fucking cares? Gluten free. Are you fucking kidding? I would have slapped them for putting that on there. What are you gonna fucking sit down and eat it with some crackers? Kidding me? 
gluten-free, non-GMO, biodegradable, no residue, bacteria-free, food-grade ingredients. Cool. Show me the fucking ingredients. Multi-purpose cleaner. I know a lot of people use this. Show me the money. Oh, so much information, but no label. How convenient that they don't show you the goddamn label. I want to know. I want to know what love is. Fuck you, Dr. Dimes. If I can't see your label, I just don't fucking want to buy it. And I'm not going to go to the store to read it. Anyways, if you don't want to make your own um, IPM spray, crop control, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Cart. Check out. Check it, check it, check it. Sorry, I'm just shopping with you guys here tonight, I guess. That's fine. Lost Coast sucks. Sprout tea. Okay. What else do I need? So let's talk about the dripper setup. And how many plants I'm going to run and all that good shit, right? So, I was going to run the Uniswabs and either put 4x4x4 four by four by four, um, throw downs on top or the 6x6x6s. Six six six. I don't know which ones I want to go with yet. I feel like both have been proven to work well. Um, if I go with the six inch cubes on top, I'm gonna wanna run four drippers on the top cube and on the bottom cube. If I go with the four by four on top and I'll just run two drippers in that cube and then I'll run um, four in the cube below it. So I'm not sure which one I'm gonna go with yet. Um, I do have a bunch of rock wool cubes, both sizes. Um, I have different size Uniswab, different brands. So, um, yeah, six on top of slabs, go bigger plants, right? That's what I'm thinking too. We'll have to see. I mean, my goal is to ultimately cull all the seedlings down to 24 for the, the main run. 24 plants is not too many. It's manageable. And um, with the six inches on top, that should give me enough medium to make up for the lack of plants because I'm only gonna run 24 plants in the entire room. So having that extra medium will help um, make sure that they're not transpiring too fast because they are going to be bigger plants.
Nope. Coco to me is like pointless. I'm gonna make an analogy right now that not a lot of people are gonna like. Probably gonna get this video flagged, but I really don't care. Growing in Coco is like being a lesbian girl that still likes dick. <laughs> like you you're not sure if you want to be full hydro and commit you're still you know kind of dedicated to the soil so you're not fully dedicated to going to full hydro you're stuck somewhere in between so you're coco you're just confused So, I'm just, I, I don't, yeah, like what's the point? What are you doing in Coco? What in the fuck are you doing? If you're concerned about recycling, wah, 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 just go with soil. You're already there. You're half-stepping. Just, just put your plants in soil. Call it a day. Like, if I'm going to go with with Coco, I'm just going to go all the way, soil. Because in Coco, you don't have the same control that you do in Rock Hill. I don't care what nobody says. Anybody says. You just don't have the same level of control. So if I'm going to give up the level of control and precision that I have in Rock Hill, I'm not going to do it and, and stop halfway at Coco. I'm going to go all the way to soil. That's just me personally, though. <coughs> Look at all the cocoa people that just left. I, all right, so this is the way that I'm hunting these. I'm realistically expecting 25% of any emails, okay? Quantum told me to expect, you know, about that many, probably less. But he said, for hunting purposes, expect to get rid of half of them. So here's the way it's going to work. I'm going to sex test them. I'll get the results of the sex test, whatever it is it is. I'm, let's just say we fall 20% male. That's cool. It's a good number. Okay. So we get 20% males. That means we're going to end up with what is that. Oh my god, why am I stupid on now? Ten? We're gonna end up with ten, ten males to call. Okay? Um, and then from there, I want to get rid of another, you know... Hold on, do I hear the baby? And then I'm gonna get rid of some more based on how they veg. Okay? Nope, no baby. So, um, after I find the males, I'll end up culling um, another handful of plants just based off of the way they look in veg, if they're vigorous, what their root production is like, etc., etc. <clears throat> Even if I'm not hunting the bigger seeds, I mean, I would, when you pop this many seeds, Right? Like, you gotta keep in mind, if you're looking for a real keeper, a real keeper, it's gonna be bang on from start to finish in every aspect. Just like if you're looking at a girl, right? If she's a real keeper, she's gonna be banging in every aspect. She's gonna look good, she's gonna be smart, she's gonna be funny, you know what I'm saying? Etc. etc. She's not gonna be like good, good bad, good, like, if you have seeds that start off slow, they're not vigorous, they don't eat well, 
fuck them. On to the next one. Fuck them. I'm not going to sit there and baby every single plant just so it makes it to the end. Like, that's not a hunt to me. A hunt is finding the best of the best of the best cert with honors. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm going to call them. Even if I'm running FEMS, if I pop 50 FEMS, I, maybe it's because I'm going to run 30 plants in a row. You know what I'm saying? Bye bye to those other 20. Big fucking deal. Like, who knows what's going to happen with them? Maybe they might have berms. They might throw nanners, you know, right before you flip. Or a week one or two of flower, they might start throwing nanners. You got to pull them. All types of shit. Rock wool can hold bacteria better. I did peat versus cocoa outdoor last year. My cocoa was great and cheaper, but now cocoa brick went up 33%. Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm a rock wool guy. But I'll tell you what. I would, I'm really thinking about popping a handful of more beans because... I know this sounds crazy. I don't like running shit that everybody else runs. And everybody and their fucking mother is growing trop cherries. And I'm so sick of seeing it that I don't even want to grow it anymore. Like, I'm just not even interested. I've seen it so many times. It's so... I have the breeder's cut in the room, and I'm like, I might just restart it to keep a mother of it around in case I change my mind, but I don't even think I want to run it anymore, you guys. I think that um, I'm going to just sidebar it, and instead of running that, I think I'm going to pop some more seeds to run another hunt after this one right so that way after this hunt I can re-veg um, the, the keepers okay out of 24 I should be able to narrow it down because these plants are going to be pretty decent sized um, you know so I should be able to narrow it down to a handful of keepers I'll re-veg them and while those are re-vegging I could be doing a whole nether hunt of other gear like I have that surfer grape waves that's supposed to be a heavy hasher and then I have this Georgia pie redux kit from Tiki Madman um, you know it's got the Georgia pie s1 lemon cherry gelato crossed with Georgia pie it's got apple fritter crossed with Tiki Cushman's and then jello crossed with Cush Tiki Cushman's <clears throat> so I could be popping some of this gear, you know what I'm saying, and um, and then while I'm revegging the other stuff, I could be running this, and then just swap them out. I kind of want to open this just to look at the packs, but I won't open it until I'm ready to pop them. <clears throat> So I don't know. I'm I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Because if I pop them now, like here's the thing. Those seeds that I just popped, in order for me to be able to take cuts off of mothers of these by the time those are done and chopped, or before they're chopped, right? Because I technically am gonna need to pretty much have clones prepped and ready, um, like so you're going to have to cut them like two to three weeks before I chop, right? Probably like three weeks before I chop. And um, my goal is to chop and hang them in the, um, the hash shed this time so I can reset the room right away. So that gives me about six weeks once I flip to veg out mothers. 
if I'm going to veg out seeds to take cuts off of them to do a hunt, I would like to veg them out for at least six to eight weeks. Right? And I'm good at keeping my cuts small or my plants small. I can train them really well. So I don't know how many seeds are in each one of these packs, if there's like 10 seeds or something. But um, I think I would probably just hunt through like one pack or two packs a year at a time. Because that's, that's a lot of mothers to keep, right? I don't want to keep 20 mothers. That's a lot. That's a lot of mothers, no matter how small they are. So, forty <clears throat> percent. Dang, that's high. Oh, I'm finally getting tired. I'm finally getting tired, you guys. I'm gonna take one more dab and probably get out of here. What's up, stankin'? Apple fritter? Yeah, it's it's good, man. I I think that um, apple fritter is probably one of the best hyped strains that uh, has come out recently because there's a lot of strains that are pretty hyped up and when it's all said and done not all of them really are you know what people tried to hype them up to be but apple fritter is one that consistently I would say I'm impressed by the terps I'm impressed by the hit um, the smoothness the yield I think apple fritters was what I hit like 94% on the press on. So. Pretty sure my kid I was going to be waking up any moment now. He was a struggle to put down tonight. He fought it till the very end. I gotta go pack Robin tomorrow or the next day. Cheers. moving around now. I'm going to start making this bottle as soon as we're done here. Yeah, it's been four hours since he ate. <laughs> I haven't had Georgia Pie. I've seen mixed reviews on it. But that lemon cherry gelato, that shit is turp. I kind of wanted to look at some more data real quick <clears throat> in the room. Don't 
me start his bottle. Hold on. Night chill until he wakes up. So I wanted to look at the graphs in the room. So the environment. I'm going to look at the last 24 hours and the last couple of days, too, right? I'm just going to see kind of what the trends are looking like. And I've been in and out of the room working in there, so it hasn't been the most stable. But uh, let's see. I'm going to actually zoom out. Seven days. So that's some pretty big swings. In the past week, way less swings in the last two days, except for the humidity, because I did flood the room pretty good. Humidity is jump, uh, jumping around, that's 49, 31, so like 20% swings right here. Not sure what was going on all day there. Humidifier working hard and turning off for something. So I'll look for that to kind of flatten out over the next couple of days. <clears throat> but right now we're pretty good. I'm okay with the, the room temp in there. Um, this is false information in here, so don't pay too much attention to it. It's just test information. I guess it's not 123%, obviously. All these pour water EC readings are so fucked up for the 2DRs, and I don't know why. So tired of those sensors. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. 
So the room should flatten out over the next couple of days. This is exactly why I set up all the sensors in the room and start firing up the room a week ahead of time because it takes that long to dial everything in. Yeah, that would be cool homework. Smoke report. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> oh man. kid to wake up. I feel like just grabbing him so I could fucking feed him and put him back to sleep already. Okay. I got my Farmer Freeman ordered. I got my Beneficial Bugs ordered. I got my IPM spray ordered. The room is pretty much done. I have a couple more drip depot pieces coming in so I can finish up the irrigation. It's been sanitized, it's been set up and running. I'm gonna swap out the pump that I have for a quieter pump. Um, and then I'm going to set up my IR blaster for my mini split for Pinnacle so I can control my AC from Pinnacle. And then basically I'm just gonna have the room running and um, I'll be watching it every single day like a hawk, um, watching the sensors, checking for alerts, making sure that the system hasn't gone down, crashed, etc. And uh, I'll start scheduling like some weekly reboots and stuff on some equipment just to kind of help mitigate issues. And yeah, we're off to the races. It's nerve wracking this time running my own control system that's not you know complete it's a work in progress but i'm excited it's definitely going to be a huge improvement over running that troll master shit Yep. All right, y'all. I'm out of here. I'm going to go wake this fool up. <laughs>